Hi everyone, this is Caroline Castro and welcome to my travel vlog to Bordeaux, France. So this is me packing for my trip the day before uh, we leave for the airport, obviously. I had everything packed in advance, but I was just putting everything in the suitcase and making sure that it all fit very nicely and it was under 50 pounds, which is very important. This is my first time actually traveling abroad without my parents. so. I am very excited for this opportunity, but I am slightly overwhelmed because I just want to make sure that I have everything that I need in order to be successful. These are my toiletries, so I was just double checking and making sure that I have shampoo, conditioner, anything I need in order to survive for the trip. And I was just double checking and making sure that everything was packed in a smooth and orderly fashion. This is me saying goodbye to my cat for the next week. He is not very happy that I am leaving, so he decided to just lay in my suitcase until I had to pack it all up. This is me packing my suitcase up the morning of the trip and getting ready to leave and head to Connecticut to make the bus ride. I did have a little bit of trouble with the zipper, but I was able to figure it out and get it shut pretty nicely. This is the outfit that I actually decided to wear uh, for the bus ride and for the airplane because it was my most comfiest outfit and it was the most comfortable considering that I would be sitting for more than 10 hours, which is something that I have never done before. So this will be pretty interesting. Stop it. Here's the bus and we are off. We are finally able to get through security and this is us at our gate. These are my friends and we are ready to take off. Here we are getting ready to go on the flight and my friends and I are very excited to get on. This is going to be a very long flight, approximately eight and a half hours. So we'll see what happens. This is us about to get ready to leave. Um, it took two hours to leave, but we are finally getting there and hopefully we make it there safe and sound. On the plane, I noticed that there's actually a camera that shows the front of the plane, which was so cool. I've never seen anything like this before. This is us finally getting ready to take off after, I would say about two hours. Our flight was supposed to leave at 6.30 p.m., but we actually left closer to 8.30. Um, there was very little visibility at the airport, so, Part of the reason why there was such a delay was to make sure that the planes were leaving um, in a safe and effective manner while also making sure that the planes landing knew exactly where they needed to land. So all of this needed to be coordinated in an order orderly fashion. But yay, France, here we come. This is the view from the plane, which was absolutely breathtaking. Finally, we landed safe and sound and we are at the Paris airport. We need to go through customs and get ready for our next flight to Bordeaux. Luckily, this flight is only an hour and 15 minutes long and we left exactly on time. So we are planning to arrive in Bordeaux, France at 12.30 in the afternoon. Once we landed, we immediately met up with our tour guide who gave us his tram card in order for us to use it to be able to effectively um, stop at certain places. Now, unfortunately, our bus did break down, so we were forced to take the tram as it was a little bit inconvenient with our suitcases. However, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. This is Place de la Victoria, about a 10 minute tram ride from the hotel. We stopped at a restaurant nearby and this was my dinner and it was the best thing that I ever had. I had it with a glass of rosé wine, bread, followed with a dessert. Next up, we are making our way to the Kedge School of Business, but first we needed to stop for breakfast. This is our breakfast buffet that we have every morning here. Because we were still experiencing jet lag from the flight, obviously I needed to make myself a cup of coffee. So this was the process of me making it. The machine was so cool um, and the coffee tasted delicious. This is the aftermath of it. 
this is us now about to hop on the tram to go to the Kedge School of Business for the first time. I was astonished with how beautiful this building really is and I'm very excited to meet some of the professors that teach at this specific school. Each of the classrooms located in this school were very similar to one another. I just want to briefly touch upon Professor Jen's lecture. So, we visited the Kedge School of Business. He briefly touched upon the historical facts of France, emphasizing more in depth on a previous rule where 60 bottles needed to be drank per year by each individual. In most recent years, it used to be double the amount. However, it ended up changing as it's kind of quite impossible to drink that much wine um, per day. I don't think I could do it personally. He then talked more about the industrial structure. So growing grapes is the first process. Then we have the crushing, fermenting, then we have the aging, blending, bottling, and then finally commercialization. In comparison to other industries, it does create a lack of vertical integration, uh, especially since those who produce the wine aren't the original sellers. He then touched upon the three regions along with how they added value as it transformed wine from a basic commodity to a luxury product. So there's the region Burgundy, which is known for their extreme product differentiation. Then there's Bordeaux, which is known for their luxury branding, and then Champagne, which is known for product innovation and luxury positioning. This was my very first meal at the Kedge School of Business. Um, I never tried fish sticks before, so you'll see in the next video uh, me trying it for the first time, which was pretty interesting, but I actually really enjoyed it. I am going to try fish for the first time in France. After we visited the Kedge School of Business and then briefly stopped at the hotel for a quick refresher, we then made our way to Bordeaux's famous wine museum. This is the scenic route that we took on the tram to get there and it is absolutely beautiful. That is the cathedral and then you will see a bunch of famous historic sites following this. <laughs> And here we finally are making our way to Bordeaux's Wine Museum. These are all of the different types of grapes that are produced within the Bordeaux wine industry. I do want to briefly touch upon Bordeaux's Wine Museum a little bit more in depth. So there are 18 sections that are divided into six areas. The first one introduces us to the vineyards, through beautiful images and stories from winemakers. Then we have the second area, which is about the varieties of grapes and the winemaking process. Um, there's also, what I found interesting was the flat touch screens, which are surrounded by gigantic wooden bottle shaped statues. Um, immediately, this allowed us to explore the major wine areas, whether it's white, rose, sparkling types. Um, we have the third area, which is about wine and the civilization. So we learned more about the history of wine and the process behind everything. Um, the fourth area is the exploration of the different wine aromas. Uh, so there are numerous food items that were presented to us. So whether it's like on long tables, uh, short ones, uh, and we were able to smell them. Some of them smell great, some of them not so much. Um, and then the last two parts of the exhibit is not really as interactive, but it contained information regarding the Bordeaux wine region and the wars that were played like worldwide. So after we toured Bordeaux's wine museum, we went to the eighth floor where we were actually able to do a little bit of wine tasting. So I chose the Bordeaux uh, region, which was red wine, and it tasted actually pretty good. This was actually the first time that I believe I tasted red wine. Very strong, but it did have a good taste to it. Here's this next one. 
So on Tuesday, May 23rd, we attended another lecture from Professor Ambai, and I just want to briefly uh, touch upon that. So she helped us to understand why market, what marketing in the professional world really is. Um, and if we can't understand the consumer's behavior through the four Ps, then it'll be difficult for us to inherit profit regarding these certain products. So we will struggle with the consumer buying process and we'll be forced to come up with alternative solutions when doing our research and implementing various purchase decisions. Um, I also learned more about the different segmentation techniques along with their everyday lifestyle style that is appropriate to their needs. So we then watched a short film that described creating a story around a specific brand. Um, and obviously, as technology evolved over the years, professionals have utilized several technological resources that assist consumers with enhancing through the physical experience. We also then took part in an in-class exercise, which I really loved. And with this, we talked about ways in which companies can allow consumers to experience the cultural wineries in an online perspective. Um, and what I found really interesting is that the younger generation is buying products that multiple celebrities and influencers use rather than purchasing a product for their own benefits. So we needed to come up with a way with this perspective in mind, how we are able to create a product and make profit on it, depending on the wine industry and the type of wine that we are looking to sell. After visiting the Kedge School of Business, we then decided as a small group to visit some of the tourist attraction sites in Bordeaux, France, along with an amazing scenic view. It was definitely a sight to see and the view of everything was just absolutely astonishing. Obviously there was some construction that was underway, but other than that, it, the scenery was just absolutely breathtaking. For dinner, we went to an Italian restaurant in the area, and the inside of the place was absolutely beautiful, and it was really uh, worth taking pictures. The next morning, we visited the Chateau La Dominique, which is located in the northwest part of St. Emilion Appalachian. As you could just see from this video, the vineyard is very large and it covers acres and acres of land. I can only imagine the amount of wine that is produced on a daily basis. The vines obviously are attended with care um, and such great attention is paid to winemaking in general. And the winemakers always make sure that the climate change is appropriate to the types of grapes that are being produced within the vineyard. First, we witnessed these huge tanks that were made originally to produce the wine. These tanks are actually not used anymore, and now the winemakers use these newly established tanks in a beautiful room with a lovely landscape um, or view of the vineyard itself. The new wine cellars are significantly larger than the original ones in addition to the two large staircases that are located on either side of them which leads directly to the lid of each tank. Now we are into another room where there are hundreds and hundreds of barrels where the wine is being stored in a temperature that is has to be below um, or at least 25 degrees. Um, it cannot be higher and it cannot be lower as this is very important uh, for the wine tasting industry. After visiting the Chateau La Dominique, we took part in a wine tasting there where we were able to compare the difference between two different red wine bottles. So one of them was established in 2013, other was in 2016. And before taking a sip of the wine, I learned that to help like establish a flavor, it's important to swivel it in the glass first. And then, once you do that, you would smell the wine, you would take a sip, but instead of swallowing it, you would breathe in the sip of wine that you just took, and it changes the flavor. So, obviously, this was something I did not even realize that would make a huge significant impact on the taste of wine. But, so we did this for both wines. When comparing the taste of them between the different bottles, it's clear that there was a different taste. I found one of the bottles to not inherit a strong dull taste, while the other was kind of the complete opposite. Red wine's not personally my favorite, but it was really cool to just like be able to experience the tasting of these specific wines. 
After the brief wine tasting, we then walked to the rooftop of the building where we were able to witness an astonishing view of the vineyard. We took pictures with our friends and just enjoyed the beautiful uh, scenic design. After visiting the vineyard, we then took a trip to St. Emilion. St. Emilion in Bordeaux, France has an integral part in the history of Bordeaux in the region. The history of wine in St. Emilion can be traced all the way back to the third century when the Romans planted the first vines in the region. And the most famous monument of St. Emilion, which we actually visited in Bordeaux, France, was the monolithic church that which, as its name suggests, is carved from one stone. It's the largest monolithic church in Europe, and its construction required is just absolutely astonishing. Um, it's located actually inside of a cave, which I found to be pretty interesting. Um, and it was just huge. And it's just hard to imagine how big it is from the inside until you're actually in the inside of it. This is us walking around St. Emilion. Um, we didn't go to the monolithic church until after this, and obviously we couldn't take pictures because it was sort of a restricted area, and we wanted to respect the privacy of the other um, consumers who do live in that area. Just based on these buildings alone, you can tell that there is a ton of previous history um, with these historical artifacts. And right now we are actually walking to our lunch destination, uh, which we attended before visiting the monolithic church. Uh, the lunch was definitely interesting and it was something that I never had before, but it was still very delicious. The next morning, we went back to the Kedge School of Business where we underwent another lecture from Professor Gent where he illustrated the correct way to wine taste. The state is just the land that makes a difference. Because these wines come from vineyards which are like about five miles away, well from that. Okay? But they have a right to different appellations. One is called Pretty Chablis which as you can imagine from the name, is like the sort of basic level of Chablis. And we're gonna taste that, and then after that, we're gonna taste the same producers, Chablis Premier Cru, made from a vineyard five miles away, but one of these vineyards that from time immemorial seem to make and then this is me actually tasting the wine. After wine tasting this morning, now we are heading on to a boat where we will witness the beautiful sunset and enjoying some delicious food that is very popular in France. The menu for tonight, I believe, was fish, mashed potatoes, and some sort of vegetables, along with an appetizer, it's like a tart appetizer with onions and dried tomatoes, and then a raspberry-like dessert. This is the view from the boat, and it was absolutely gorgeous. The next day, we are visiting another chateau located actually 10 minutes from the hotel, directly in Bordeaux, France. Once we were inside, we witnessed tons of metal wine cellars, wooden, I mean, you name it. And there are also ones that were decorated based on a specific year. Each wine is made into these specific cellars to broaden the taste. Similar to the other chateau we visited, we climbed down a bunch of stairs 
and we were in a very cold room where there were hundreds and hundreds of barrels. That is where the wine is stored uh, for safekeeping until it is ready to be sold. And then this is a picture of all the different types of wine that this specific chateau in Bordeaux, France makes. We then did a little bit of wandering around and this is the vineyards where the wine is originally made and produced. And then this is us during the wine tasting. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was our last major event. And now we are packing up and getting ready to head back home. This was definitely one of the most memorable and one of my favorite trips I've ever been on. Um, it was the first time I studied abroad without my family. And I will definitely plan another trip to come back here. But right now I think, yeah, I wish I was in Bordeaux longer than a week. But it is great to finally be back in my home bed. Thank you for tuning in to my vlog, and as we say in France, au revoir.